And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show, everybody. Oh, man, we're doing something different today. We're going to be talking about, are you ready to, you know what, survive a nuclear war? Hopefully, hopefully, we have Dark Soul today coming on. We're going to be talking about some prepping. You know what? He rides an awesome freaking CVO. He's a biker. He's on here on this show with us uh, whenever he can. It's going to be a good one. How are you guys doing in the chat room all over the internet, man? I'm bringing in Dark Soul right now. There is Dark Soul. What's up, buddy? Oh, not much, Hollywood. Just watching this freaking craziness happen and unfold and keeping tabbed in all the good news channels and try to stay on top of things and what things going on i'm gonna tell you 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 know what's funny man is you do have to really watch where you're going for your information now it's funny me and you are talking and we both watch sky news out of australia yeah i do uh (laughs) it's funny i can get more stuff out of there and here find something else on tiktok of all places of the social media platform, it, you know, you got live feeds being coming across from Ukraine that, you know, they're on TikTok over there, and you can actually see some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, I, I watched earlier the, where they threw Molotov cocktails on top of the armored vehicles, uh, some of the Russian vehicles that came in. I'm going to let you know now, uh, while all this is going on, you notice the meat is all focused on the uh, Ukraine and stuff. They haven't talked about the trucker convoy that came to Washington. No, that one's supposed to actually be coming, what, uh, for the State of the Union? Yeah. Yeah. They, they've been on the road here for the last four, four days. And they're, they're, matter of fact, some have already been reporting that there, but you don't see it on none of the major channels. Everything's focused on Ukraine. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Uh, let's go and start with this Ukraine stuff. What do you think about how it's all went down, how the administration's response has been to it, what they could have done different, could have been avoided? Because today, I don't know if my audience and your audience understands, something happened today that hasn't happened. It didn't even happen during uh, Reagan's era, if you're uh, around to remember that. They just put their nuclear deterrence on ready alert in Russia. Uh, you want to explain what that is, Dark Soul? Basically, get your shit in order. Excuse my French, but get yourself in order. Get your household in order. Uh, you thought the Cuban Missile Crisis was uh, alert? What he's putting out? You got to think, with the military that he has and everything, why he just went all full blown. He only sent in 80,000 of his troops. Just a you know, not even a half of it into, you know, Ukraine. Once he gets Ukraine, what's him stopping to continue on? That's the biggest thing. If you haven't watched the uh, the UN, you know, United Nations and stuff and everything, they are building up on the outer border of Ukraine. You know, you got British, the Canadians. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I would never thought in my lifetime I would see – you know, shit hits the fan. Uh, well, uh, Bla- or, uh, Dark Soul, uh, Stringetti, who said anything about nuclear? He said defense forces. Fake news says the N word. What did I miss? Actually, it's not fake news. Uh, no. You want to explain that to him? No, it's not fake news, man. It is actually, he did. He sent a message to his general uh, to become nuclear deterrent. And what that means is basically, since we got the DEFCON system here, he basically took from a DEFCON 1 to a DEFCON 3. And, you know, DEFCON 5 means it's all out. So, I mean, this is real bad. I mean, got, I got friends in the military and everything, and they're worried. Let me put it that way. And also, NATO, for the first time in their history, went on ready alert. And a lot of people are saying uh, from those uh, former secretary states like Condoleezza Rice, this doesn't look or feel like the old Putin. They, everybody's thinking he there's something going on with him. 
what do you say, Dark So? It's sorry about the dogs. There's something stirring them up. Uh, Hopefully it ain't a missile. <laughs> <laughs> they they they're my alert. They let me know when something is outside they ain't supposed to be outside. You know. My my pity, she's the first one initiates it. So and I got a black lab too. So but yeah. Ah uh, the I was young. I, I mean, Hollywood, me and you are the same age. We grew up, you know, further the 70s and 80s and 90s, and, you know, on, on. And. Man, don't remind me how old I am. <laughs> You're still a young buck. You just want, don't want to admit it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and all the essence and everything, I mean, I'm a prepper. And I've been doing what I can to prepare. For what the unable you you got the prepping shows out there you know you have the ones that prep for the zombie acopolis you know that kind of ordeal you have ones that actually prep for a nuclear fallout they actually deal stuff and dig out their backyard and put a bomb bunker down underneath their by their house and stuff you know you got your bug out bags reason we yeah, we're called preppers because we prepare for what if what if scenario you know, you, if you don't have that what if in the back of your head all the time, and me being a truck driver, when I leave this house, I'm leaving out with a goodie bag just in case. I could be stuck in a blizzard for two, you know, for a week. Look at it the way this, you know, it's just be prepared, you know. It, well, what's funny thing. is I actually went Dark Soul this morning. Over to my daughter's house because I wanted to sit them down because, like you said, we went through the Cold War and they didn't understand what the Cold War was because they're young and dumb. Uh, they don't know how to read history books, but we lived during a time where we had to worry about this kind of stuff. And I sat down, my son-in-law and says, you know what, if that damn siren goes off, you got about 20 minutes to get over to my place where I got stuff stocked in the you know, the basement, and that's when you're going to have to help me put the plastic up and get ready for everything. Because I looked at uh, the nuclear strike map from FEMA, and about 50 miles south of us is the Byron nuclear plant, and that's on a target list. Well, there's nothing you can do if something like that hits. Well, if you're outside the blast radius, yes, there's something you can. And it's just funny how these new kids or these kids don't understand what you got to do to prepare now is that something you believe in that hey if a nuclear war hits we're all done i'm gonna tell you they're not prepared i mean you remember back in the day when the sirens going off we did mock drills in school you know go get underneath the debt your desk and stuff i mean even from tornadoes or whatever uh i remember doing that kind of stuff uh, i mean kids today don't even know where their local you know, nuclear fallout shelter is, you know, <laughs> much less, you know, get from point A to point B. That's another subject. Uh, but I went in the other day, just passed by through the, our nuclear fallout. We got three of them here in town. And the, the one I felt was somewhat secure was built in 1952. But you know, with the way the weaponry is today, I doubt it would hold, withhold anything because of the way they got these bunker busters now. They drill down, you know, 25, 30 feet before it even explodes, you know. Uh, just saying, I mean, yeah. You're anything for your first deal for us uh, prepping and everything. Not just you prep for the house, but you got to have a backup plan. Place the bug out to, you know. It could be at a, a friend's house. A meetup place where your family can meet together and come together and be able to go someplace safe. I mean, I think the best best way to put it this way: go watch the TV series Jericho. If you haven't seen that TV series Jericho, oh, that was that awesome. Is, that was right on the head. Uh, I mean, now it was talking about you know here in the United States within you know the battle within basically, but it kind of gives up the layout what we would have to the combination between red dawn you know 
Mm-hmm. With Patrick Swayze, hopefully not the <laughs> second one. Yeah, the, the these kids do not really know what war is, except for our veterans that actually went and fought in the last wars. You know, right. Desert Storm, you know, Afghan, they don't know what it means. I mean, all they sit there and play video games and stuff and, you know, all those stuff and everything. They see it on TV and they play it and everything, but they haven't had a real bullet fly by their head. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you know different. what's funny, Dark Soul, is a lot of people, if you actually look back in history to the World War One and World War Two, the reason why this is so serious is because World War One started in the area of Ukraine. World War Two, Germany, right there by Ukraine. So this is a bad part of Europe that has been responsible for a lot of human suffering in Europe. And one thing I don't understand about the United States, why do we care about Europe? They're always screwing off and screwing up and getting the people in some situations like we are now. And now you got a psycho in Russia. If you guys uh, watch that thing with Black Dragon with Compost, he is in Russia. You watched a live stream of a guy who's going through it right now. But what's with that area, Dark Soul, is always causing problems? Politics. Uh, energy. It really boils down to energy and money. Uh, you got to realize what Trump did. He made his energy independent, where we were not relying on, you know, OPEC, and which is basically Russian oil and, you know, all the foreign oils and stuff. And then when Biden went and canceled the Keystone Pipeline, Cancel and everything went back, and now he's begging OPEC. Sorry, I'm not gonna grab on my freaking knees. Freaking shut that crap down, restart the Keystone Pipeline, build our freaking border wall, get that done. You know, you want to come in our country, come in and write. Don't come in here illegal, man. You go through the paper stuff, get vetted, and all that. You want to come in, but you know, right now we got 1.2 million illegals came in in just in one year. Mm-hmm. No, it's just well, Jason. There's a, bigger, there's a bigger scheme to all this, and, and this is what I when we was talking about, you know, with the trucker convoy coming over thing about preparedness and everything. I wasn't kidding back then. What I said last time, you gotta get yourself in order: food, water, shelter, and a means to protect yourself. I mean, here it is. You got these politicians and these two a anti gun people want to take away our second amendment a god-given right to protect ourselves and here it is ukraine used to have these type of gun laws there and basically say come get guns and they're putting up a hell of fight well you got uh jason smith served eight and a half years did three tours to iraq do you think putin is crazy enough to start a nuclear war I think people are paranoid. I think if it was going to happen, it would be happening already. That was from uh, Jason. Thanks for your service. But what do you say, Dark Soul? Thank you for your service, Jason. Um, We might be... I'm going to put this. I'm really concerned. Why would you... Why are you uh, so concerned? But I think it's because we all live through the cold war that we know how this stuff really pans out i always tell people and it's right here on youtube put in the day after (laughs) nuclear attack scene that movie actually got gorbachev and reagan thinking about taking down their nuclear arsenals because that's how scary that movie was at that time period But I don't think it happens right away. I think all the players are getting their stuff ready. And you got a madman going. I'm going to put this one. We got a weak president that really won't fulfill anything. You can put those sanctions on. If you look at sanctions, they are a, a prelude to war. So give me a second. Well, I think, you know, you're kind of right on there. It could be, It looks like if you're in a chess match, everything's starting to line up. 
like I said, NATO, the first time of it in its history, has went to ready alertness. Uh, he came back today. Our ambassador to the U.N., said you know what that order was unacceptable when he says you know what we got to get our nuclear deterrence uh you know at the readiness and like you said that's like a defcon system that we use and that's about a three on our scale that they're getting ready yeah um it's when that message came across i mean it's just not here that's talking about it you got canadian generals you know and australian generals they're all on basically putting the alert out because if putin don't stop at ukraine we're in world war three because that's what you know nato's building up the troops along the bottom bill but they won't go help ukraine ukraine's basically got to do it themselves but how much longer can ukraine have that you know hold out i mean we're talking about guerrilla warfare about to get off in, in there and be really in hand in hand i mean we we went into Iraq and did the shock and awe, and this is a totally different from that, you know. Well, what you mentioned, uh, you know, the Ukrainians can take uh, some uh, solace if they do go into a guerrilla warfare. You got to remember in Afghanistan in 1980s, they beat the hell out of the Soviet Union at that time, and they were a lot more powerful back in the 80s than they are today. Do you think Putin's escalating it to de-escalate, throwing out the N-word? No, he just escalated it. And not to mention China. Just don't forget about their play. They're moving their battleships toward Taiwan right now. And we're under the uh, assumption we have an agreement where uh, we got to defend Taiwan. That's why I don't understand with the United States, why we're always sticking our noses into everybody else's business. You got Ukraine where you got the left that says, oh, we got to defend our borders. Well, what about our borders, man? What about us? What about our people? Day one, he put restrictions on the energy prices. And in Pennsylvania, you're in Pennsylvania, them natural gas fields are people's livelihood and he cut them off. And now we're going to be upwards of $5 a gallon in gas? Uh, I'm a truck driver and I haul gasoline. I've been watching it. Uh, 360, Stephen, uh, uh, thank you for that, but I didn't serve. I have a lot of family members that serve. Uh, I, I got the highest, most respect for who served. Um, my wife works for the veteran home, so that our part of giving back to you know the ones that serve are currently in the military. Uh, I do a lot of charity events uh, to be supportive. Uh, I donate to the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, so I just want to kind of put that out there. Uh, I'm well versed in what the military does. And, you know, I'm subscribed to both all, all the military channels out there to kind of keep you know, up what's going on that does be put out there. But you got those uh, other channel lines that kind of, you know, in the back door channels, basically. Uh, it's all good, 360. It's all good, man. Uh, but I, uh, to what this going down play, you got to realize Putin and I can't even say freaking that Chinese little short dude. But Z? He, yeah, they, they, they got to realize they met, was it about six, seven months ago and basically made a little pack. So, you know, all these uh, all these countries putting going after the money part they seize if china is back and i mean you got to look at biden sending messages to china begging you know putin not to do the what he did so that guy's going to tell you this is all a bigger play you got to go back about four or five years ago who was in freaking ukraine his freaking son and you got freaking nancy Pelosi's uh, grandson that worked in the oil fields over there so there's a bigger play going on there thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? To talk about Ukraine, uh, you know, we can get into that in a second. But I have never seen leadership on the world stage as I have with Zelensky. The United States wanted to airlift him out. Instead, he says, the fight's here. We need ammunition. I don't need a ride. He's with his people. 
And I think that is what has given the Ukraines the will to fight, but also has shown the world what a real leader looks like. Because you know ours, they go into a bomb shelter. Come on, you had in Canada during the, the truckers' convoy, uh, Justin Trudeau, he went and hid. But here you got Zelensky, and he's sitting there. He wants to fight. Then uh, the mayor of Kiev, who was uh, an ex uh, heavyweight champion, he's there to fight. They are. They just got so much in them that it's just awesome to see. But I'm gonna tell you now, forever's there watching. Cheers to you. No, and it's not Russia. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna put it this way: He's got more kahunas than I could ever see. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna leave it right there. You know, he's got some kahunas, basically stand for what he believes in. They believe in the freedom. It, this reminds me, you know, the revolution that happened here in the states. That's how determined they want freedom, and. A lot of these kids today, they got it pretty good, and they don't know how good they got it. And well, it's even funnier, uh, Dark Soul, is you have all these people running around trying to take the guns and saying, well, the Second Amendment didn't mean that. You are now, my friends on the left, okay? My friends on the left, you are now seeing the reason that we do have the second amendment exactly i mean he opened up that's why i said earlier yeah he was uh where you couldn't have guns and stuff like that and he just basically if you went on the fight for your country and stuff come get the guns he opened it up come defend and that's that fight back is really putting a hurting on putin the longer this goes out the more hurting he's going to be and not to mention, you got to realize, three days ago, you know, when BD had, you know, had him on, Compton on, only 50% of the population was against this. And that number has grown ever since he's basically killed civilians and not military. So, and now you got all, even civilians and military going at it to back it up. So, <clears throat> it's that's over there and to what you were saying earlier about our own deal you got to go back to world war ii the treaties and alliances that were put in place and when reagan did what he did that's when you know ukraine became separate when all that came down so to what you're saying so mopar you're saying it is true that we have u.s military dress as ukrainian civilians are the ones who took out all of them russians no uh-uh no uh none of our guys are actually in the field yet uh they we did send some troops uh on the i think over to uh poland uh to the poland base there to uh to distribute some of the weapons that's coming over there uh that's about the extent of it yeah because if we put americans in there and one's killed then you're at a whole different level at that point. Well, we got American news uh, news media's over there, and and they've been a couple of them, man. They almost got it. They, you know, they, they were you know, you got to remember, there's other media platforms just in the your mainstream media. And stuff. Oh, you got your independence out there right now. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm gonna tell you. Kids are playing the video games. Turn off the video games, actually. Go see what war really is like. Well, what's even more funny is uh, Russia is one of the, supposedly one of these most powerful military countries, but they still do not have air support. Uh, they're not supreme in the air, man, and that's like mind-boggling right there. Uh, that's kind of hard to believe. I mean, I, I was it? Uh, it was a British uh, soldier did. He's got a, a YouTube channel. He did the twenty reasons not to fuck with the U.S. and he listed all the military stuff that we have. 
and then he went around and did another one the 10 things not to mess with china and he did a comparison between the two of us and the biggest deal is our nuclear weapons if the nuclears uh, nuclear weapons start going off nobody really wins being no real honest, uh, nobody wins uh, no. i mean that movie uh you know i i, I know somebody said quit talking about movies but the movie war games it was a computer simulator playing the games and everything and it ended up doing tic-tac-toe it was doing nuclear simulations it took the tic-tac-toe and incorporated it in and it come out that nobody wins nuclear weapons goes on yeah you can start throwing nuclear weapons but what good is it i mean look how long it took for japan to recover you know yeah, and those were those were uh you know, not what we have today, man. Uh, Ryden Humboldt County, by the way, go check out his YouTube channel. I like uh, the troops that told the Russian ship to go F themselves, knowing their own demise. Now, that right there was <laughs> yeah. free, baby. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that one, too. I was like, hell yeah. This is what I've said earlier. They are so determined to keep their freedom. And that's what you're, and that's what really amazes me here in the United States, with all the restrictions that we had during this uh, deal with this virus. We just gave our freedoms up. We're just giving up everything for security in this country. And then you see how the Ukrainians are handling it. They're dying for their freedom. That's what the United States used to be about. Yeah. Basically, this upsets me the most. How much people are so blind. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. It, that's what makes our government, and the very top of it, the first words out of it says, We the people. That means... The government is subdued to the people, not the other way around. And they don't understand it. You got your First Amendment, you know, and then, and then the Second Amendment is to guarantee these rights. And if you really want to run the Constitution, give it up. What's that? And people just want to give it up for security. I know. They, you know, the Patriot Act. After 9-11. Oh, was, my God. That even affected motorcycle clubs. People don't understand it. It did. That that basically bend you over and shove it up where the sun don't shine and say, we don't give a care. And the, the spying that went behind it and everything. And, you know, people think that, you know, you're truly free. You're not truly free unless you make some changes. And uh, Mark said uh, David beat Goliath with a slingshot. You got that right. Boy, how they did, you know. There's some great ventures out there, great stories that you know, it took one person to make things changes, you know. Uh, you Gango, that, he asked you, uh, Dark Soul, do you think that the Russian would fire non-nuclear missiles at first at other countries that get involved before launching nuclear? It's a good possibility. They just tested their largest uh, H-bomb, well, you know, without a hydrogen bomb. And it's, you know, it's supposed to be bigger than a mother of all bombs that we got. Uh, right. The most that out. So uh, uh, now we got somebody dark. So this is going to be a fun one. Y'all need to break free of the narrative. It's all a lie. Russia is going after the global cabal. Uh, Ukraine is a uh, Munder laundering hub for the cabal. You're watching too much blacklist, man. Uh, go <laughs> If you want to answer that. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm not going to uh, dismiss any shadiness, all right? We know each country has their problems, okay? But in, you have to you gotta really, remember in Russia, it's the oligarchs that are actually, you can call them a cabal. They're the ones who actually run that country. Yeah, you got the old KGB and everything that, you know, they're locking up their own people and he calls out against us. I mean, that's just the difference. Um, well, we can't say much. Look at January 6th. 
there's people still locked up for a freaking you know that wasn't even a real insurgency you know insurrection no they 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 didn't see an insurrection no, a real insurrection and everything is, you know, is the militia coming to defront and take out the political party and having a whole new election all over again. That's what the, you know, insurrection act really is deal. But the way they got things stated and everything, if you even raise up now in arms, they list you as a terrorist. Look at the, you know, all the truck drivers in Canada. You know, Nancy Pelosi, you know, made a stupid statement before all this blew up. That got her in a lot of hot water dealing with American truckers. Yeah, but mm. you see how quick that got squashed, squashed out there. So, right. This is it, when we talked about this Hollywood. It, it, this was going to be a really hard subject to really get into because I get very emotional, and I'm trying to keep my cool at this without getting really saying what I really want to say. <laughs> I'm on the same page with you on a good bit of stuff, and there's things I disagree with. But I'm gonna let you know now, as far as this government goes, they just need to stay out of my business. That's where I. Well, with. you know, it, it, I know where you're going at with that type of stuff, uh, but I want to wing it back to what we should be telling our. You know, we gave the background of what's going on, what we need to do. And that's why I'm listing this on all my channels instead of just Rumble, is how should somebody prepare, and how should somebody prepare if they got grandkids and kids? So what do you prepare for this? Would be food, water, and shelter, and a means to protect yourself. It's mm-hmm. that's the main key things, and you know, and a bug out bag and a bug out place to go to. A meeting focal point. Or your family and friends get together and you got to be able to survive whatever comes at you you know then it's the what if factor that that's you don't know what's going to happen but with the with the lines being drawn the way they are between china and russia this is not looking pretty that's all like it, it's basically what it is so no, and also everybody has to remember, you know, we start getting into that point where, you know, there is something like this. You can't even trust your neighbors at that point because it's all out everybody for themselves type of deal. Uh, that's why you have to have something uh, to protect yourself with. And that's why the Second Amendment is so important. You got to st- at least get a shotgun or something. Yeah, uh, I, I'm. I'm not gonna say what I have in here. That uh, I'm prepared to protect my wife, and my kids, my grandkids, uh, anybody else that comes in my house that want to be protected. Uh, they want to stand their ground. Uh, same thing. I got a place to go to bug out to if it gets that bad. You know, the uh, the <laughs> you, you're pretty much right, Grandpa. The government will go underground with the cities they built down here. And the rest of us poor souls will be left what's left in after the nuke attack. Pretty much, it's it'll be uh, fend for you all, fend for yourself. And they're you know, gonna be shipping. On, they're gonna be sipping on champagne while we're up here frying. Yeah, I, I hear you. It, you're, you're pretty much right, Grandpa. And that's what I'm trying to convey. I'm the best way to convey it and stuff is you know having those things in place. Uh, if you don't have it, get your house in order. You know. And I know things are tough right now with the inflation and everything. Prices going up. You know, get your stuff in order. You know, have them. If you, I think Dave Ramsey put it best. You know, you need to have your. You know, when it comes to financing, you know, I, a lot of people don't agree with his philosophy, but his philosophy is cash is king. You pay down your debt and become debt free. And other people say you're not really debt free. Well, in essence, you can be. And you have to have your emergency fund. And just like in prepping, our emergency fund is having a bartering system put in place. You know, when food supplies get deal, you can use food as money. You know, ammo, ammo shortage. It's been going a while. You know, that could be used for money. Anything for bartering to, you know, could be used as an emplacement than the, the dollar. It, 
if you got gold coins, silver coins, that stuff like that, all can be used, you know, to barter with. Yeah, you're right, common belt, a commander belt, you know, stack of gold and silver to barter with. Uh, precious metals, copper, you know. There's liquor. <laughs> liquor. Yeah, liquor. Yeah, right here, liquor. You know? That's going to be like gold. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, especially your, your whiskeys. You know, I use it as an antiseptic, you know, like uh, your Everclear uh, is one of them. You know, on your high proof stuff and everything, they can use it as antiseptics. You know, if you get a wound or a thing, you know, let's go back to old timer days. You know, mm-hmm. lar. People don't know how to make lar. You know, <laughs> you know, lar lasts for a long time, you know, but people don't know how to make it. There's There's books out there now. That's been coming up relevant here in the last two or three years for survival books. But your common people, if I walk down the road and everything and ask them, are you prepared? They'd be like, huh? What are you talking about? No, they think the government's going to help them during oh, something yeah. like this, where the government's going to just shoot you out uh, and they're not going to even think of you. And yeah, people say, well, don't talk about, well, Jericho was close, man. And so, well, phew. The day after was wow back when we were because that was the highest watched uh, movie on ABC during the 1980s. Yeah, and it was just horrible. The after effect. If you really think that the government's going to care about you during something like this, you, you're sorely mistaken, man. You're you know you're on your own. You're really on your own. Well, Family Life just said it perfectly. You know, as long as you got. Your ammo, your weapons, and everything, you can go hunt for your food. You got a fishing rod? Know. You go fish. I don't know, I don't know how, why you got timed out, uh, process. I'm not in there right now. Go ahead. Uh, you, you can go fish and stuff. Now, well, you like to go fish, you know, as long as the water well, ain't problem, well, with the problem with that is if you think about it, if there is a nuclear exchange, the nuclear fallout's going to kill everything. You know, you might not be able to eat from uh, the water. You're sure to hell not going to have any animals to hunt. Uh, It's going to be a bad time with the nuclear fallout. That's why you got to take care of yourself prepping it. Oh, that's true. Uh, That's the reason why you got the MMREs and all those other deals out there to to stock up. It lasts for 20 years. You know, stock up on the deal. I I don't know how much I can stress it more. Food, water, and shelter, and means protect yourself. And you know what's funny with this guy, Light uh, Warrior? Uh, Generation X has been ready our entire lives. Bring on the Mad Max world. Yeah, you guys have been uh, ready on TV, but you really don't know what the Cold War was. I'm going to put it this way. Have you, uh, let me ask you this, Denry. Do you ever go paintballing or airsofting? <laughs> You know, do you uh, go, go to the gun range and actually, you know, practice what you preach? Uh, right. That that's that's where it's going to come down to. Because sitting up on the couch and playing on the video games, yeah, in mindset, maybe on buttons, you know, you're good. But when it comes to the actual real thing, it's a different story. You know. Uh, Robert says, "Not even kidding. Nuclear war will make it very hard to ride on two wheels." Thing is, uh, Robert, if you got something that's like uh, my first bike was a 77 Triumph or anything, you know, before all the electronic gadgets, you'd be able to ride one of them bikes. Uh, I see what uh, Commander Belt saying about Mad Max and his educational pretty much. I mean, I know he's talking about Mad Max movies, you know, you know mm-hmm. things are pretty much out there. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, I'm afraid I can't do that. He says, if there's a nuclear war, I want to be as close to the ground zero as possible. Hey, make sure you have a beer and ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) I think you said it best, Hollywood. I'll be sitting out on my front porch and everything, sipping on a cold one when it goes. Well, another, you know, a must have in a nuclear bunker is some seeds and some Mary Jane to puff on because you're gonna be down there for at least two or three weeks, man. You have to have something to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And hey, it's medicinal too. <laughs> you don't have to worry about a drug test afterwards. <laughs> yeah, that is a key. Since you brought that up, that is a key to having seed. You know, and also water it down in some way to keep in water clean. 
Uh, mm -hmm. You know, 50 gallon, 50 gallon drums of water with a filtration system where it circulates on a timer. Uh, solar panels, wind turbines, you know, certain things to keep the power on in your house. I mean, you can get the generators, but you got to have gasoline. If the pumps are shut down, you can't power those, baby, after you're all out of gas. Well, the thing, Mark, with when Jap Japan got nuked, yes, a lot of died and a lot of lived, but it was a different uh, megaton back then. It's nothing like we got today. A singular uh, nuclear missile can carry up the, what is it, uh, Dark Soul, 20 nuclear warheads? Yeah, uh, take a Hiroshima, uh, can't even say the name right, uh, Nagasaki, the bombs from that, and amplify it by 30 times. And that was a lot. That's a lot. What is it? The Russian Tsar uh, bomb. That's what, 50 kilotons? Yeah, 50 kilotons. It would basically drop Alaska off the face of Earth. Right, right. Well, that's true enough, man. Uh, also, you might want to get, uh, what is it, uh, some plastic. Because you, yeah, you're uh, going to need a barrier. Yeah, the, the thick plastic, it's a six mil. Uh, so you mm -hmm. can try to seal up your house best you can from inside but if you hear like where i live and where you live hollywood we wouldn't survive i mean let me face it i'm right next to a fuel depot that's going to be right. one of the targets you know and you you if even if i make it to the you know you'd be able to bug out and make it to you know to the bomb shelter here I mean, well, you know, in Pennsylvania, and those that are actually in the area, caves and old mines are the best place to hit. Well, yeah, true. I, I know a few of them around here, and I, that's one of some of the bug out places I got you know planned for my family. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I got a buddy that's on the fifty acres of you know fifty acres that I can go to. Uh, right. I got another guy who has the three acres, you know, that has a nice little pad and stuff and he's right by the side of mountain and he knows a bunch of where the caves are in that area so mm. ain't that funny we got all this technology and stuff like that but if something like this goes down we'd be going back to our original origins sitting in caves i i've actually i mentioned this to my wife and maybe we need to shut everything off for a month and see if we can really survive i mean shut power off water off and actually see if we can make it for a whole month without killing each other basically <laughs> and uh see if we're really prepared kind of test yourself uh, that's one way you, you go through it. you but you'd be you know what's funny surprise. you imagine that these young kids they can't even walk away from the internet or the games but trying to do it without any of that stuff especially the kids with adhd they're going nuts <laughs> goes, we got our bikes, man. Uh, that's my that's my stress release right there. You know? <laughs> right. You know what? I wish I uh, really researched this. Where you got uh, the EMP boxes, where you can save your electronics and stuff like your cars uh, from an EMT blast. But that's first thing that's gonna really happen is the EMT blasts. Oh. Uh, the hacking is going to happen first. They're going to use hack to hack down the, you know, look at the pipeline on the East Coast. Look at the panic that happened there. You know, it's the bat wasn't a rude awakening. And then on top of them shutting the government, this government shutting everything down wasn't the second awakening. I think this is your third and last awakening you got. And if you can't get yourself underneath this, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, we can, uh, there's so many preppers out there have been war sounding the bells for warning for a long time. And and when it comes bald town to the ones that are without, are going to be fine the ones that, with, that have, you know? And, well, Ronald, you be, you be screwed, my man. You're only 52 miles from Washington, D.C. You be done. You're done. Get yourself a uh, Mary Jane and a bottle of Jack Daniels, man. Yeah, yeah, that's... Fill your cup up and uh, sit back and then watch the glow. Uh, let's see here. 360 Seven. Do you remember the show Doomsday Preppers? Yeah, I did. I, I uh, love yeah, that show. I, I like that show. That and you know what's even more funnier is uh, every <laughs> they'll call them white supremacist. If they're doing that, they're white supremacists. Uh, but they really don't know 
the importance of a show like that. No, uh, uh-uh. no. I think uh, a lot of the people are really waking up as far as this uh, racial stuff that's been shoved down the throats, you know. Right. Uh, I, we did a show the other day, you know, in respect. Here it is, 2022, and we're still. What show was that? Uh, racism and you know, in 2022, you know, here it is. And what channel is that on? That's uh, on Independent Riders. Yeah. So go take a look at that. Yeah, go go to Independent Riders, uh, and you'll see our show. We uh, talking about Martin Luther King and what he stood for and what came from it. And here it is, 2022. Uh, racism is still alive and well. And you know, I I get bashed I, on one of my TikTok battles. You know, you have one too, man. I got the rebel flag, but the rebel flag means totally different from what people actually know what it really is. You know, oh man, I catch hell for that every time I film in the garage. I'm gonna tell you now, right now, the way things going, that rebel flag has got a whole new meaning now. It's basically oh, yeah. rebellion. It's rebellious. We're rebelling against the government, rebellion against a lot of things that's been shoved down our throat. And I'm gonna tell you, a lot of the uh, you know the uh, color people are starting to fly themselves. You know, and they mm-hmm. realize what it really means now. It was a rebellion. Uh, our civil war was based on taxation, and here it is. We get taxed. Bent over, basically, and left and right. The Boston Tea Party was against tax. And, you know, uh, you Henry, <laughs> Henry, what's going to happen when we can't watch? You know what? I'll live stream from, I'll get a satellite thing and stuff like that, and I'll live stream during Armageddon. <laughs> I'd be like that dude that uh, Woody Harrison played in 2012, man, right? You know, reporting live from uh, the uh, Super Bowl. Of the ball of Yellowstone, man. <laughs> That'd be me. I'd be out there doing it. This Here's- is beautiful. <laughs> that'd be me <laughs> i'd be that dumb to do it too <laughs> i would <laughs> yeah. Here, i'll be the one I, trying to get to the freaking back to the rv trying to get to the plane and everything try to get out of there <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's what i like doing uh you know this is a new concept for our channel uh, as bikers, we need to talk about this kind of stuff. It ain't about, okay, how do you prospect in a damn club or who's killing who with the biker news. These are serious issues that we should be talking about as bikers. You know, just because we ride motorcycles don't mean we have to sit down our pecker and uh, say, hey, you know, I want to hear about the next Harley Davidson coming up while world events is uh, happening all around us. And just because you're a biker doesn't mean you ain't going to have a nuke up your ass. No, no. That's a good point that uh, that Bell just pointed out in her thing. You need to have... Uh, hold on. Uh, you need to have uh, a ham radio. Or a CB. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, some way to make some kind of communication to the outside world. Well, you also have to have one of the manual uh, radios, man, the crank ones. What's that again? The crank radios. Oh, uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, you sit there and you crank it to kind of get the weather station and everything. But I don't know how good it's going to be if you got the EMP that knocked everything out. You know, the radio. Well, like Mike, like Mike just said, uh, the only things that run uh, after a nuke uh, is uh, old school points and condensers pre-1975. H uh H E I ignitions. No, yeah. well, if you can get a hold of those, that'd be great. You know, unless you have one of them pre-made box where you just stop the uh, EMP hit. You know, I know they got them on YouTube. They're real easy to make. Uh, I mean, you get the old transistors. They go the old tube stuff. You know, if you can get a hold of that, put one together. If you know mm-hmm. what to do and stuff. Uh, you have uh one of the guys asking, what about gas mask? I'm going to tell you, if you don't have one now, I don't know what to tell you. Because, uh, you know, these cloth masks that these people all wore, they didn't do crap. Because you can still smell your damn fart. And that's about the size of a particle of a virus. You know, just well, fam- family life, you can post that in uh, the community section. Uh, maybe we put a list together for those who aren't prepared. And, you know, before uh, we end up here... 
Putin has now, I just read it on the wire, is now uh, blaming or trying to uh, tell everybody that Ukraine is going to be using chemical weapons that they've already deployed them. Nah, that that that's probably his guys doing that crap. That, I mean, yeah, so we're getting we're getting into a different uh, reality here, where now there's chemical weapons possibly being used. Won't be the first time. He's know. saying it's uh, phosphorus, is what they're saying. Okay. And here's the guy who just blew up the oil refineries. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, phosphorus, it's not that deadly, you know. You, you'll live through that, but it'll burn you, you like fucking hell. You just got to remember, with Russia, we already knew it with the Soviet Union. Their propaganda machine is worse than the MSM here. <laughs> it is bad. You know. Uh, one of your great resources you can go to, if you, you can find, is uh, one of your old army stores. You know, the, you know, they has some of the old war, you know, old World War II type stuff and everything. Believe it or mm -hmm. not, you can catch a deal on those, and they're still good. You might need to change out the filters in them, but you're talking about getting you know, a type of mask like that. You can get a hold of that stuff still. You know, where would they go to find out their uh, local fallout shelter or bomb shelter? Uh you can go to the city hall uh, and find out where your local bomb shelters are, uh, and make sure they're up to par. Uh, reach out to your mayor is another thing and say hey this stuff's going on we need to check out our facilities and see if they're up to par you know and if there anything's outdated you know need to be brought up to date you know what i'm saying it needs exactly. to be a community effort you know put into play very well said well that is our discussion on are you ready for nuclear war Hopefully it doesn't uh, get to that route, but like Ark so said, prepping, prepping, prepping. Uh, there was other disasters that uh, we've already lived through. Hurricane Katrina, this 2020 thing when we were all locked down, everybody's going to get toilet paper. So it's a good thing, even if you're not thinking the worst, but you got to be prepared. Yeah, don't clean out the toilet paper shelves again. That was kind of ridiculous, a little bit overboard, you know. When you go shopping, just buy extra canned goods and put it in the stockpile, you know? Right. Canned, canned goods last a long time, you know? I don't know about you, man. If that's going to hit with the, you know, we're going to have Roman candles flying above us. I want uh, toilet paper. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Screw that, man. I ain't going to be using no radiation leaves to wipe. Uh -uh, I don't want my ass glowing. It's already a sad sight as it is. I don't want anybody else to see it. I want to put something out there, thing. Compton, if you're watching this, I hope you're safe and sound and much respect to you and your your family members and everything that do stand up against this tyranny. So I just want to give there's that already, out. There's already been 3,000 arrested for protesting. Yeah. And so if, if anything, try to reach out to Hollywood or Black Dragon. Let them know you're safe. So that being said, Y'all take care, get the prepping, get your house in order, food, water, and shelter, and a means to protect yourself. I'm out of here. Rock on.